Hi everyone. In this tutorial I'll show you how to quickly model a uh, Voronoi style bracelet uh, like you see in this render here uh, which should be suitable as either a high quality digital asset or as a uh, real world uh, 3D printed object. All right. Um, the techniques we'll use here are all basic polygonal modeling strategies, um, which should translate well to most capable modeling packages. However, I'll, uh, this will be the first of two instructional videos I'll make on the uh, creation of this object. Um, this first one obviously will be done in uh, 3ds Max, and then I'll make a follow-up uh, for Blender. Okay, so let's get started. Um, We'll begin with an empty scene here in 3ds Max. Um, since we're making this model as a uh, candidate for either a virtual or 3D printed model, uh, we'll want to pay attention to uh, scale here. Um, I have my scene units set uh, to centimeters, but you could use inches, millimeters, or any uh, unit of measure that's suitable for jewelry scale. All right, so we'll begin by bringing in a uh, torus primitive, okay? And um, the main thing you're going to want to pay attention to here, as far as the radius is concerned, is the uh, is the radius one, which is the inner radius, okay? Because this is a bangle-style bracelet. Um, you know, it's not going to be, uh, there won't be any openings here to slip it over a wrist. So you have to imagine, uh, you know, this is going to have to fit over somebody's hand in order to, uh, in order to be worn. All right, so um, the important part is that the inner radius is measured approximately uh, the size of, of the, you know, whatever kind of uh, hand you're going to want to want this to work with, uh, whether it be a woman's hand or, or a man or a man's hand. Um, so basically, I mean, you could look up, um, you know, the average uh, diameter of bangle bracelets online and see what uh, see what they what they say there. Um, typically, on the, on the quick search that I found. Uh, um, you know, on average, a medium-sized bangle diameter is around 2.3 to 2.5 inches, uh, so that translates roughly to about 6.3 to 6.5 centimeters. Okay, so the radius, remember, is not the diameter all the way around. Um, uh, the number here is the, of the radius is actually from the center to the edge. Okay, so from the center here to here. Okay, so it's not the entire diameter. Um, so if I want my entire diameter to be 6.3, then the radius here, you know, will have to be 3 point whatever. So, you know, if I'm going between 6.3 to 6.5 or, or 6.6, let's say I want my uh, diameter to be 3.3 for the inner radius. And then the outer radius, we can just play with until we're happy with the thickness of the, uh, of the torus. Okay, so I'm going to bring my outer radius, which isn't it isn't very important as far as measuring the object for print. Um, it's just an aesthetic uh, feature. So we're going to bring it down to, in this case, I'm going to bring it down to about 0.35 centimeters. Okay, all right. So now we'll add, uh, oh, and also the segments, bring them to 64 and the sides up to 24. We need a, a pretty decent resolution here on the uh, object uh, for the for the future steps here. Okay, so now that we have this, um, we'll go ahead and select the uh, select the entire element, and uh, we'll scale it up on the Z at least. I'd say at least uh, 250 uh, percent, but uh, even more than that, it depends on how. Uh, you know how thick you want this this bracelet to be. I like I like something about this thickness here. So um, I brought it up to about 250, 255, okay, on the Z. So once you have this, um, you can go ahead into your uh, polygon modeling tools and bring up generate topology from the graphite ribbon. And uh, you want uh, the edge direction procedural. Okay, and uh, just click it once, and you'll see it'll change the uh, edge flow on the object. And uh, it 
basically changes all the edges by 45 degrees. And then we'll go into our front or to the graphic view and uh, we'll switch down to our uh, faces mode and we'll zoom in here right in the center and you want to select the four polygons that make up a diamond pattern right here in the center of the object and then you could uh, just loop that selection and this should be the result right here okay which is uh, just a crisscrossing pattern uh, with diamonds in the center the diamond shapes in the center and then once you have that control I to invert and just delete those okay so now we're left with a ribbon like topology around the object okay and we can bounce out from orthographic to perspective and uh, this is what we have so far okay now from here we could add a relax modifier and uh, deselect the uh, fixed boundary points option and increase the iterations I would go to about uh, 10 to 12 iterations in this case I'll stop at 10 okay and we'll have something like this all right and the next step is above the relax modifier you can put a shell and adjust the outer amount to a desired thickness okay and in my case I'll just go with 0.2 centimeters all right, and you'll notice that uh, if you scroll down on the shell uh, modifier, you have the option to select different uh, uh, polygon groups. Uh, you'll want to select the, uh, the edges group. Okay, so then all of the interior edges, all the interior polygon edges will be selected. And from there, you can switch to uh, put another edit poly modifier on top. And when you switch to face mode, those interior edges will still be selected which is convenient for our next step which is an inset and we'll just do a very slight inset in my case it's 0.05 centimeters all right and then uh, once you have that you can go ahead and throw a turbo smooth modifier on top and maybe about two iterations and uh, this is the result okay very simple object to create um, just a few modifiers and uh, a few steps involved and I think the result is, is quite visually aesthetic um, in particular because if you look inside each hole um, what's interesting is you'll see the cross pattern of the uh, topology behind that hole and even if you look in the top uh, the holes going around the top you see that cross pattern so no matter where you look you get that and I think it's quite interesting so it makes for a unique looking bracelet um, which would be uh, a nice candidate for 3d printing I think or uh, even if you just wanted to create it as a digital asset as I said it would be uh, a nice little uh, uh, you know addition to a character's uh, wardrobe or something similar okay well, that's basically it. I mean, if you wanted to, uh, at this point, uh, put another relax modifier on top and leave the, uh, the boundary points fixed this time and maybe make uh, five iterations there just to smooth it out just a little bit more. Um, and this is, the, uh, this is the end result of that. So, all right. Well, I hope you found this useful and um, enjoyed it. It's a, it's a simple tutorial, but uh, I'm going to do one uh, also for Blender. So if you're a Blender user, um, have, have a look out for that. It should be coming soon uh, to my channel. And don't forget to subscribe and also uh, like the video. And uh, I'll be coming back with some more videos very shortly, probably within the next day or so. So um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.